Hello and welcome to the Classical Guitar LPs podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Powell. This will be the second episode of our new season, the fifth season here. And the artist that we'll be listening to is Jose Luis Lopetegui. He is a guitarist that I have just begun to get to know. And uh, this is an exciting LP from 1971 on the Turnabout Vox label, TVS 34390. The album is Spanish Guitar Music of the 16th and 17th Centuries. Works by Luis Milan, Alonso de Mudara, Diego Pizador, Luis de Narvaez, and Gaspar Sanz. We'll be right back. And we're back on the Classical Guitar LPs podcast. As I alluded to in the intro, I've only just begun to learn about this guitarist on this record, Jose Luis Lopetegui. This is a 1971 recording of Spanish guitar music of the 16th and 17th centuries. And so to guitar players out there, several of these pieces are going to sound familiar. Uh, you may hear that they're in different keys, etc. Um, there's not a lot of info on the back regarding what Jose is playing uh, on, on this record, but it sounds to my ear uh, on, the, on side one, the first side, that we're hearing a guitar that's capoed up several frets, probably to about position four or five. And then he is playing this on on the guitar to make it sound like a Baroque guitar. It quite possibly could be that he is playing on on an actual Baroque guitar, but uh, my, my educated guess is that he's playing this on a six string. Uh, be that as it may, we hear some wonderful pieces. Louis Milan, uh, Fantasia. We have the Pavanas 2 and 3. We have, of course, Mudara's Fantasia. A composer that I've not really heard of before named Diego Pizador, uh, Pavana Muilana Villanesca. And then we uh, close off uh, this this side one with uh, Louis de Narvaez, Siete Diferencias. And so these are, pardon my, my horrible Spanish, you would think I could speak Spanish a little bit better uh, than I could. On the back of this record jacket, I am just finding some absolute treasures of information. And you know, every now and again, you look at you look at some academic reading, and and sometimes sometimes you look at it and you kind of glaze over, and sometimes you're just enthralled with what you're reading. In this case, this is definitely the latter. I I I am just finding the information on the back of this record jacket wonderful. I wish I would have had this record jacket in my possession um, when I started my own studies back in 1995 down at Simpson College in Indianola. It's just it's just amazing. So I will be reading, uh, rereading, and reading again as I tell my students to do that with their with their <laughs> uh, information in their academic classes. Just just find find things in here about uh, both stylistic and cultural items from. Uh, from 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 Spain uh, in this era, and then also regarding the actual work, it's just absolutely amazing. For example, what I might share with you here is just this this sort of snippet uh, from about the middle of the record jacket. This is regarding uh, Louis de Narvaez. Of the ten books of tablature for the vihuela that were published in Spain between 1535 and 1578, Louis de Narvaez wrote the second one, published in Valladolid in 1538 with the title Loise Libro Delfin de Musica, The Six Books by the Delfin of Music. This work, as the title suggests, is divided into six books, of which the first two consist of 14 fantasias written in the polyphonic style, giving ample evidence of the composer's broad palette of colors and exquisite musical shades, and his lively sense of rhythm. The third book consists of pieces arranged for the vihuela, and the fourth has religious hymns. Villanesco's melancholy romances and instrumental variations make up the last two books, from which the present recorded set of delightful variations on an anonymous vocal theme, Guardam las vacas, Keep Watch on the Cows, is taken. And I just find this great. Uh, so often I speak from the perspective of a, of, a, of a classical guitarist. You know, guitar players have to sort of always translate. Um, that was my experience anyway, translating uh, the, the, the musical education experience into their own, own instrument. What I mean is harmony is taught in terms of the piano always. And then depending on the actual school that you go to, you know, your music history and that sort of thing. There may be a snippet or two about certain certain notable figures like John Dowland, uh, et cetera. But to get specialized like this, I, I find to be very, very exciting. And so just wonderful stuff to read. And as, as my music instructors always said, read, 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 
Uh, those liner notes on those recordings, you find out so many great nuggets of information uh, with that. And so very interesting things. I think we hear some wonderful playing on this on this side one as well. And I think I think uh, Jose Luis Lopetegui is a great guitar player. Found out by reading uh, this record jacket that some of the reasons why are that he was a student of Emilio Pujol. Uh, Emilio Pujol may be of note to you, uh, and if but if you haven't quite heard his name, you would know who Emilio Pujol's teacher was, and that was Francisco Tarrega. So in terms of a teaching lineage, it's very direct. We would have Francisco Tarrega, then Emilio Pujol, then Jose Luis Lopetegui, and that's 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 really cool. Uh, not often do we have to be able to be so close to one of the master composers of our genre. So awesome. I think it's also notable to say that the guitarist on this recording started off his collegiate studies going to engineering school and then uh, abandoned that to pursue music uh, in 1961, began those musical studies, and then uh, was awarded the, the music conser- was awarded an award from the Music Conservatory of Barcelona, the uh, Prize of Honor de Musica de Camera uh, from Narcisco Epes, and so uh, became to be friends with Narcisco Epes, and so just just some giants of the Spanish guitar scene in the uh, you know in in the middle of the 20th century. My goodness, and so we'll take it away. Enjoy side A, side one of this. Spanish guitar music of the 16th and 17th centuries. I think you'll hear some old favorites of the Renaissance stuff and also some hopefully new pieces that you haven't heard just quite yet. Enjoy. Thank you. 
I think what I enjoy so much about this gentleman's guitar playing is just sort of the decided nature uh, in the way uh, that he interprets and plays the instrument. There's a, a real command and a real um, a real sense of, of of deep knowledge, and you can sort of hear the the, the love and passion for this this art form uh, coming through in the music. I at least at least I think it's very prevalent, and I think that's one of the reasons that I like this recording so much. Um, sometimes. When classical guitarists perform Renaissance music, it's it's almost this sort of artificial nature, and we we don't have any of that with this fellow's playing. So, uh, what a wonderful recording this is, and uh, I cannot wait to share with you side two. Before we go on, remember side one finishes with the, the Narvaez, and so so we've got a set of theme and variations here. Basically, is what we would call them now. Uh, what I really like about this, again, this record jacket, all this information. Narvaez introduced the variation form differencias into Spanish music at a time when it was yet unknown in other countries. Wow, that's sort of cool. I know that in one of my classes uh, here that I'm teaching this semester at the community college uh, here at the West Campus, at the DMAC West Campus, very soon we'll be starting to talk about theme and variations, and it's exciting to know um, uh, that, that, that this 
this music of Louis de Narvaez uh, was, was on the forefront of that before. And so in any case, sort of fun to know about that. So enjoyable piece with that. And then we finish off the recording with several works by Gaspar Sanz. So we have a piece I was not familiar with, uh, Capriccio Harpeado por la Cruz. Uh, and that is, that is harp, translated as the Harp Capriccio for the Cross. Absolutely stunningly gorgeous work. And so I, I really appreciate being here. This we hear uh, then the Pavanas para la D, and then we have Sweet Española. Now, a lot of the numbers to guitar players out there for Sweet Española are going to sound familiar. And the reason for that is, of course, uh, many of those tunes were taken and then adapted by Rodrigo for the Fantasia para un Gentil Hombre. And so these pieces are going to sound very familiar for that exact reason. So once again, thank you for joining us on the Classical Guitar LPs podcast. If you're so inclined, uh, please take a look at anchor.fm slash Powell Guitar. If you're interested in supporting the show in any sort of way, uh, there, there are multiple ways. You can share that show with your friends. You can you can click uh, on any of the links and become become a donator to the show. You can there are different multi monthly plans that are offered by by Anchor, and so I would I would ask you to take a look at that and check out how how you can give to the program for that. Check us out on social media. We can be found at Instagram.com slash Powell Guitar. I also can be found on Twitter uh, slash Powell Guitar as well as Facebook.com slash Powell Guitar. Happy listening. Enjoy side two. We'll see you for the next episode. Mm-hmm.